welcome to this Blossom of Friday video tutorial. I'm going to show you how you can add a beautiful flower crown to your springtime bunny. So you've made your beautiful bunny doll and now it's time to turn her into an Easter or springtime bunny with a flower crown and a swishy springtime skirt. So first of all I'm going to show you how to make felt flowers. You'll need some scraps of felt in the colours you want. You'll need some for the flower flowers itself. Um, I'm going to show you using pale colours, pe this peachy pink and white. For the peachy pink, the centre of my flower is going to be this sort of charcoal colour and I'm going to use this yellow felt for the centre. Um, you can play around, you don't. You can do it any way that you like. Um, come up with a colour scheme or just go crazy random different colours. I think that would look beautiful too. So first of all, I'm going to, I've cut out my pieces from the template and I'm going to use this larger of these two. So these two go together to create this poppy style flower. And you use two cutouts of this size and one of this smaller size for the poppy and then this circle for the center. So I've already marked a piece here. I'm going to do the second one by gluing that just using my little glue stick um, you can use if you've got a fabric glue stick great just makes it a little bit easier you could pin that into place you could hold it into place and draw around it or you could cheat and use a paper glue stick just don't put too much on it like a print stick just put a tiny bit on so I'm just going to mark all the way around there now when it's actually cut out it's not going to look exactly as neat as it does on the paper um, but don't worry too much about that. It, once all the pieces are put together, it will make a lovely flower, but it just sometimes in the cutting, it just doesn't look quite as neat. Okay, so here we go. So I've got two of these larger size ones, and then I'm going to do one of the smaller size. And I'm going to mark around there and then cut the pieces out. And then do the same with the center of the flower. For this actually, because it's dark, I'm just gonna cut directly around the paper. So I'm gonna use my little glue stick and I'm just gonna hold that and cut directly around there. So I've got my three pieces here. As you can see, they're not perfectly cut, um, but I'm gonna sort that out later. So firstly, I'm gonna start with one of the larger pieces and just place the second piece of the same size so it's sort of diagonal across the petals underneath. Um, so it's not just on, sat on top like that, so that they, the four petals sit in between the gaps of the four underneath. Now at this point, if you like, you can glue each bit into place um, with your temporary fabric glue. just to secure it. And then the third piece, which is the smaller piece, I'm just going to repeat that process again on the diagonal in between the gaps. There, and just make sure it's central. And then I'm gonna take the center, the center circle, which is in the charcoal gray. I'm just gonna place that. I have put a bit of temporary fabric glue underneath there. I'm just going to place it down. So I'm going to use embroidery thread that I've split down to one single thread, but you could use just normal cotton and, you know, obviously change the colour depending on what, you're, what colour you're using. So I'm just simply going to knot the end a couple of times. And then I'm just going to start sewing from the back and I'm just going to come out inside the circle just towards the edge. And then, so the knot's secured that into place and I'm just going to sew each one up out towards the petals so that it, or each line, each little thread lines up going, sort of reaching out towards the end of the petals. And I'm just going to 
this one's going to be about half a centimetre it's going to go through all of the layers underneath don't do them too long because the nice part of this is when it's finished you can sort of push the petals up so you need to leave a bit of room for that and then come back inside the circle towards the edge and again just repeat um, I like to make them uneven um, but you can do them however you like you can do them really thick really even you know whatever you think for your flower crown and then I'm just going to continue all the way around the edge so that it holds that little circle into place and I'll probably do about 10 of them I think all the way around there we go I'm happy with that I'm going to just turn it over and just put a little knot in the back just to secure it I know the back doesn't look too pretty but you're going to sew it into place so it doesn't matter there we go and then the last step is just to push these you can actually use the iron to do it just be careful if you've got any um, man-made fibers in there because it could melt so you can just put a low heat iron on and just gently iron them out and then sort of press those to give a really nice 3d shape oh, it looks really cute you could of course use different colors so you could use a slightly darker color for this one you, you know you can really be quite imaginative with the flowers okay so now I'm going to show you how to make this little daisy which is actually my favorite and again it's pretty much the same process I'm going to use my white felt and I'm going to take that there's only one size of petal shapes for the daisy and I'm going to just glue that into place I'm going to mark round twice and cut it out so I've cut the two white petal pieces and I'm going to cut the center piece I'm going to do this bit in yellow but like I've said before you can do any color um, and I have just temporary fabric glue down this place because it's quite a little circle so it's quite fiddly and as such I'm going to use my little scissors that were intended to be nail scissors but I bought them because I knew they'd be really handy and they're really handy for cutting little pieces of felt so I've glued that in place, I'm just going to cut around the paper and just neaten it up a bit. Then I'm going to place the two pieces on the diagonal so they create that sort of double layered flower. The little piece in the centre. And then I've threaded a needle with some yellow cotton and I've put a little knot in the end and I'm just going to come up from underneath now you can pin that into place um, I'm just going to hold it for now and you come up from underneath inside the circle again and you just repeat the same pattern with as before I think it would look really sweet actually to do just all daisies on a flower crown so of course you don't need to have a certain number of either flower you can just do whatever you like but for the flower crown that you can see in the picture um, that I've put at the beginning of the pattern guide Oops. Um, I have used three of these poppy type flowers and two daisies and then I think it was this pink one that I did with the charcoal centre as well but you know you could just mix and match or, or like I said just do a, a cute daisy chain would look really sweet so I'm just going to keep doing this <clears throat> so I'm coming up from just in the center of that circle and just going outwards probably half a centimeter into the petals it could be that it falls on the petals underneath that's fine don't do them too long because like I said before you, it's nice to have a little bit of bend in these petals to give it a 3d shape and just keep going round and each time make sure that thread goes out from the point where it comes up underneath in the center of the flower and in a in a direct line out so it, it all kind of comes from a, an imaginary center point if that makes sense 
So there we go, all finished. I really love the stitch, stitchy look. Um, you could use a contrasting thread. Um, I was thinking a purple might be quite nice on a daisy with a yellow center. Um, and really the, you know, the, the options are limitless. You could make all different kinds of colors. You don't, it doesn't need to be limited to a flower crown. You can make any lots of different projects with this and, and kids can make them too. They're really straightforward. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little knot in the back. Oops. And then I'm going to remove these pen marks. So there we go. And then the last little thing, just to add a bit of depth, a bit of de uh, shape to them, you just push those inner petals around a little bit. You could press the iron gently up against it. If you're using man-made fibers, just be, be careful with the heat setting, but you can kind of push them in a bit and it gives a nice 3D shape to them. So with the leaves, it's just a simple cutout. Um, it's up to you to decide how many you want to add. You might want to just cut out a couple and then play around with placing the flowers that you've made onto your bunny and then see whether you need any more. You can add sti stitching on here. You could do a little line, either machine stitch or embroider onto there with um, little lines coming out. You know, there's, there's lots of options. I'm gonna keep mine plain for now. Right, time to pin into place. So I have my bunny and my flowers all ready and made. I've made some different ones in red and a bit of a different peachy pink here. I think I'm gonna to stick to the pale colors. So, you want to take a bit of time arranging the flowers until you get just the right look that you want. Um, and you can, when, I, when I've shown you how to make them a little bit, you know, when you push them up to make the petals a bit more 3D, don't worry if they flatten out a bit as you're sewing them into place. Once they're on the bunny permanently, you can kind of push them up a bit. So, I'm going to start off by just pinning into place and I'll probably move them around a bit. See, she actually looks really cute just like that. So you could do just one little flower with a leaf or with two leaves that would look really cute. But I'm going to continue with the flower crown and I'm going to place the big ones first. So. You could do it quite symmetrical where you've got one and then you can kind of go like this. I'm going to go for a bit more of a, oh, I don't know, something like this. And I'm going to place some of the little, little ones underneath. Slightly underneath. I think I might. So you just keep sort of pinning them into place. The first time I did it, honestly, it took me about 20 minutes to get the exact placement that I wanted. Because you still want it to look like a flower crown. I mean, yeah, that looks cute. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with that. I like that, it's quite cute. It's got a bit of a vintagey bathing hat type look going on. So I'm gonna add a couple of leaves in just to, I'm gonna add them in quite loosely and a bit non-uniform. Yeah, okay, I'm pleased with that. I might push that one to the back. And I 
I'm going to just move everything slightly up more towards the top of her head. There we go. I'm really pleased with that. I think that looks really cute. Okay. And the other thing you can do is continue the flower crown around here. I'm probably not going to do it with this one. But I'll pin them into place just to show you. So what, what does look quite nice, if you pin these ones to the side and then continue around the back, maybe add a few more leaves in and just continue here. That looks really sweet. So it's got that sort of continuous full on flower crown look going on. And then I'm just going to use some embroidery thread so it's nice and strong and sew these into place. Now, one thing I must say, you know, you, you have to be really careful if you're gifting this to anyone or it's going to a small child, you, you know, these pieces are potentially dangerous for a very small child. So you must make sure that you give that correct information over that she's only used as a decorational piece. I'm using embroidery thread because it's nice and strong. I've made a double knot at the end which I'm just going to trim closer to it and I'm using my doll needle which is an extra long needle. Now you don't have to use this, I just find it um, a little bit easier. Now, because I'm using this dark thread, for now I'm just going to sew the dark centred flowers with their leaves underneath into place. I'm going to remove the yellow centred ones. Coming through that flower just towards the edge of centre. Pull it through. You've got the knot that you've made that secures that into place. And then replace it where you want it to go. And then just go. So all I'm going to do is with this one I can actually just get it to come out the other side and I've got the doll underneath there so a thread has gone through the doll's fabric and hold it into place it is tricky and you need to be quite firm with it and pull it through And then, or you can just go around the edge and you can actually just lift the flower, bring the thread out somewhere that's going to be hidden underneath there. Pull that through, so it's, can you see it's gone right through. It's not just nicking a little bit of the fabric, it's really gone through it nice and solidly. And then go back, back into the doll again and up and out. And then just do that a few times around until you're sure it's secure and in the place that you want it to be. Great, I'm pleased with that. So I'm going to finish the knot at the back. I'm going to trim any excess thread and then I'm going to repeat this with the daisies with the yellow in, yellow coloured embroidery thread. I hope you've enjoyed this mini tutorial. If you take a look at my Etsy shop you'll see lots of patterns in there where I have video tutorials for heirloom dolls or you can make your own um, by following me step by step and I make it super easy. Thanks again, see you soon.